Welcome to Media Unlocked. We offer perspectives you won't see in the Western mainstream media. And with Western war propaganda machine set in full overdrive, there is so much blanket media coverage, opinion, comment on the conflict in the Ukraine. Some might think that the West is actually fanning the flame of war rather than fighting against it. And the voices out there are promoting only one view of the conflict through a Western lens. Russian news outlets have been virtually eliminated from having a voice in the Western sphere, further narrowing the ability of the audiences to get the full picture. Today, we are talking to Anna Belkina, Deputy Editor-in-Chief at Russia Today. So where are you now? How are you and how is Artie doing? I'm coming to you from Moscow. And obviously, this is a rather challenging time for us because, well, it's obvious that right now there is a concerted effort to silence our voice. You know, RT has been on the air for almost 17 years and we have presence all around the world. And the reason, you know, and we're obviously very strong competition to what we consider the mainstream media. We saw that there was a deficit of a diversity of opinions, a deficit of stories on the so-called mainstream channels, particularly in uh, Europe, in the United States. And we sought to uh, complete that picture of the world for those audiences. Yeah, we have already seen the EU has slapped sanctions on RT and RT America is also facing shuttering and Apple actually has pulled RT from its global app store. So what, what's the problems RT are facing right now? So basically we are the victim of what is going on politically. Now, what we're seeing these governments doing is bringing entirely non-political actors uh, like RT into this sphere and saying, because there is you know, this conflict going on, honestly, to us, it seems like it, what it does, it betrays the pretense under which they operated all these years. In the United States, we have been declared a foreign agent back in 2017. In France, when our channel launched, the journalists would not be allowed to attend any government events, press conferences would not receive accreditation. When our uh, German channel launched, YouTube shut down literally on the same day the YouTube stream equivalent of that channel, immediately there began this concerted attack against us. But there was always, it seems like there was always sort of a need for them to maintain at least a veneer of commitment to freedom of press, of freedom of speech, uh, and so forth. So they could not write outright ban us because everybody would accuse them of censorship, um, rightly so. So do you see these sanctions as some consequences of the war, or do you see it as an uh, information war itself? So it's obviously part of the information war, and I'd like to say that that's not the information war that we started. So what effect do you think these bans will have? What this will happen to your staff and in these agencies like in the United States, and how will their lives be affected? We are not, obviously, we're not fully shut down, even though there is a bit of a uh, monopoly of American digital platforms in particular spaces. There are alternatives, Russian alternatives, Chinese alternatives, and we are going to keep working because we know that there is a real demand for an alternative perspective because the world has long stopped believing just that very narrow, biased, one-sided depiction of the world by literally a handful of media from a handful of countries in the West. Thank you for just sharing your insight about how information world looks like and how do you see the free speech as championed by the countries like the US. Now, what we are seeing a lot in the criticisms that are leveled against us is the accusations that don't say that, don't say that oh, what they're saying is factually false. They're saying this is a perspective that we cannot possibly allow in our space. And I think that is the biggest danger that, that you know, again, we, well, we work in the news media and we understand how important it is to be committed to facts. And we always are. Mm -hmm. Yes. So UK officials has described RT as Putin's Putin propaganda machine, said they hoped it would not return to UK screens. 
I wonder how do you think about it? And do you think RT has a editorial freedom in terms of stories you carried? We have always had the editorial freedoms, for example, for French audience that had absolutely nothing to do with Moscow. Our American correspondents in these countries, people don't want to hear about what Moscow thinks about, you know, whatever it might be. They don't have that much interest in the daily you know, details of life in Russia. They really want just to see the stories in their own countries that their own media is not covering. Uh, mm -hmm. Russian media has been labeled as state-affiliated on Western-controlled social media, while U.S. state-owned media are free from such labels. So why is that, do you think? And I know exactly which labels you're talking about. You know, you have the BBC, which is funded by, by the British taxpayers, labeled as, I believe, publicly financed or public media, and then somebody like RT, funded by Russian taxpayers, labeled as state media. I guess more dramatic actions against us, different authorities waited for the pretext of the situation, the political situation that is going on right now. But really, the war against us started much earlier, including by the platforms and by various regulators, by various political bodies as well. There has been a lot of disinformation mm -hmm. since the war started, and we have seen fake footage, misinterpretations, I wonder how RT has dealt with this kind of disinformation? So we have a lot of reporters on the ground, and we believe that the best way to counter disinformation is with true information. That's what we've been doing. You know, We see that it really resonates with a lot of the audiences all around the world. I think that's it for our questions. Thank you, Ms. Belkina. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.